get it on. First to my right, boxing out of the out of the blue corner. Weighing in at 145 pounds, representing Central Division LAPD, wearing blue trunk. Put it together for Mr. Chris Hoffman. His opponent to my left, boxing out of the red corner, also representing Los Angeles Police Department, North Hollywood Division, weighing in at 145 pounds, wearing blue trunk. Let's put it together for Ryan Elegant. Marty Mullen, referee in charge. Both these fighters from the LAPD, one from the Central Division, the other from the North Hollywood Division. Hoffman, you got to look at him there. He's the one with the tattoo on his right shoulder. Both these fighters have identical outfits, so that's how you can dis distinguish between the two. And we're underway here in the first round. Illigan only giving up about an inch height-wise, even though they both weigh the same. A lot of holding already in this fight. He's two awkward styles, Illigan being a southpaw, Hoffman being the righty. Well, we asked Illigan, ooh, with a big right hand there, and both fighters now just kind of flailing away. Hoffman landing a couple of jabs for points. But we asked Illigan before the fight, what are your expectations? He says, I just want to do my best. <laughs> He's doing his best right now. And a body shot from Hoffman. Ooh, and a big right hand. Now Illigan grabbing and goes down to the canvas. This is where sometimes the inexperience plays in, and also the adrenaline in round one. Exactly. Illigan's the aggressor, but Hoffman's getting the best shots off. There's an uppercut that lands. Another good right from Hoffman. Both, the, both of these fighters have trained Illigan for eight weeks and Hoffman for three months. And Hoffman likes to stick and move. Whereas Illigan seems to be doing a lot of clutching and grabbing. Well, Illigan's bringing the action to Hoffman, but Hoffman is actually playing the counter punch in this fight. He's waiting for Illigan to, to be the aggressor, and then he counters with big, big shots. Hoffman with a right hook that glances off Illigan. Now combinations. Now Illigan has Hoffman on the defensive and then kind of grapples him. And the referee separates him. A referee for this fight, Marty Mullen. Ten seconds left here in round number one. It's the LAPD versus the LAPD in the first fight of the evening. And that will do it for round number one. I have to give that round to Chris Hoffman. He had several clean shots. He got in there versus Elegant. Elegant did a good job being the ring general, but he didn't land enough punches to win that round. We're going to see the stumble in that first round. Well, the action was furious, and then he kind of grabs and stumbles to the ground. A lot of holding the first round. Like you said before, a lot of these fights, the first round is going to be a fill-out round where you have to find out what your opponent's strategy is going to be. And that first round, you just have to Play, play it patiently and patiently and go ahead and see what your opponent is trying to do. And you see one of the main reasons why people like to gather here at boxing events is the pretty ring girls that walk around the ring. There's a look at Hoffman, Chris Hoffman, 5'9", 150 pounds. I mentioned out of LA, works for the LAPD in the Central Division. And we asked him what raising money for the City of Hope means to him. And he says he likes to give hope to people who have no hope, which is a terrific answer. Round number two. Illigan has Hoffman up against the ropes. A good right hand by Illigan. Both fighters just kind of flailing at each other. And the referee now is going to stop the action for a moment. It appears Illigan lost his mouthpiece. Has it readjusted by his corner. Rudy Berrigan seems to be a trainer on a lot of these corners. Berrigan also will fight in tonight's card. A lot of these fighters will give their time for charity events, and we've asked them if they would fight anything other than this, and the answer seems to be no. They're just happy with just getting in the ring for three rounds with some of their fellow cohorts.
It's really a labor of love. Boxing is a sport that's just the ultimate battle between two people. I mean, when it comes down to it, you have to fight in the ring and show your skills. Well, fatigue starting to set in for both of these boxers. Each fighter's had his moments here in the first round. There's a good left hand by Hoffman. And another good left by Illigan. Might be the best punch of the fight for Illigan. And right now, Hoffman's a little staggered. He and a, like he's a little weary down. He's, he's exhausted. You can see the look on his face right now. Well, this is where you really want to capitalize. Illigan with a good left, now a good right. And now stepping in to give a standing eight count is Marty Mullen. And that could be fatigue. There's Mullen calling Hoffman over. And we talked to the doctors before tonight, Anthony, and they said one of the things that the doctors and the ring announcers will do is look in the eyes. That's what they can tell whether a fighter is still focused or still will have his balance. Well, it's going to be hard to tell because this is, is his bell rung or is he just tired? Because right now he's just walking around like he's just blown out. He has no stamina left. And he has a look in his eye where I'm not hurt, but I'm kind of tired. Let's we'll see if you can't hear in the ring corner of Hoffman. Well, Richard Hill, I think one of the ringside doctors. Well, here's a look at the ending where we saw. We saw Marty Mullen check on the condition of Hoffman. And we also have ringside doctors. I mentioned Richard Hill and William Royale. That was Richard Hill that was taking a look at Hoffman. And evidently, he looks okay to continue. Yeah, he's not hurt. He's just a little fatigued, and right now he's catching his breath. But it's going to be important for him to pace himself his first minute of this round. You know, all the training in the world sometimes cannot prepare you for what goes on in the ring. Because we asked a lot of these fighters before the fight, do you plan on saving some energy? Are you going to stick and move? And... Initially, they all come out with the same answer. We're going to try to stick and move, but then they let everything out in the first round when adrenaline kicks in, and that's where the experience also plays a factor. On well, the back of your mind, you know you only have a, a few rounds to show what you got, so you have to go out and make a good impression the first round, and if you don't do so, you're in the hole. So right now, this fight is tied up one round apiece, and this is going to be the deciding factor right here. Third and final round. Hoffman and Illigan. And an old-fashioned slugfest as we start round number three. And now Hoffman drops his shoulder to get some breathing room. Well, apparently Hoffman has a second win because he's throwing some pretty good shots, whereas Illigan is rushing up to Hoffman, but he's not throwing punches as he comes. Ooh, good hesitation. And the other thing you'll notice, too, is these boxers will start to drop their hands when fatigue sets in, and that's when you're more susceptible to those overhand rights and the uppercuts. And Illigan slipping again. And that will not be called a knockdown. Accidental trip. Marty Mullen checking on the condition of Illigan, and Illigan's still ready to go. Well, that's a contrast in styles. You have a soft ball versus a right-hand conventional fighter. You're going to get some tangles, especially with inexperienced boxers. And the balance, too. You'll notice Hoffman in round number one had his balance, but now he seems to be losing it. Well, the first thing to go is your legs, <laughs> especially when that third round comes around. There's nothing left in the tank. And all the cardio in the world in the gym is not going to prepare you for something like this where you're spouting all the physical energy. And I'm sure they sparred plenty more rounds than three rounds, but this three rounds is a lot different than practice and sparring and conditioning. This is, this is when the lights are on. This is when it counts. And remember, we're here for a good cause. This is the City of Hope's 12th Annual Fight for Life. I'm Jeff Tolcher alongside Anthony Cobbs. Following all the ringside action. As 10 seconds remaining in the third and final round, a good right hand by Hoffman, still cl clutching and grabbing. And now Hoffman starts to unload as the round gets ready to expire, and that's it. So we saw a flurry of activity as both fighters giving them each other a hug at the end of that third round. And how do you score it? That round could have been even easily. I'm looking at it just now, and they're looking at each other 
kind of puzzle because you have first round went to Chris Hoffman easily. The second round, Ryan Illigan was the aggressor and he had landed the most clean punches. And this third and final round, Chris Hoffman actually held his own. So as you see the, the fall down, it was more of a a trip tangle more than a knockdown. So right now this is going to be on the third round to who win this fight. I think the edge goes to Hoffman. Well, we have Marty Mullen as our referee. Jack Reese, Pat Connolly, Gwen Adair, who we found out before tonight's fight, is actually a retired official. Those are our four judges. They'll rotate also ringside. Three judges and one referee. So Gil Carrillo is collecting the scorecards. And we are ready for a decision. Let's go to Gil, who will tell us who won the fight. Yeah. <laughs> 